Hey folks, so if you've been following this series, you'll know that on March 28th of 2022, I replaced my quarter wave ground plane antenna on my Synchrobit hotspot with a commercial rack antenna having a slightly higher gain. The idea here was to see if the increase in quality and gain of a store-bought antenna would make a difference in my aerial coverage and witnesses relative to my inexpensive homebrew antenna made from PVC fittings and aluminum welding rods. Now for those of you who just want me to cut to the chase, here are the baseline conditions for my quarter wave ground plane antenna, which I'll compare to the results for the new antenna. With respect to earnings, you can see here that my average daily helium tokens dropped from 0.265 to 0.200 after the upgrade, a decrease of about 25%. In addition, my total number of witnesses dropped from well over 60 to the mid 40s, a decline of about 33%. One might suspect that my earnings dropped as a result of witnessing fewer hotspots. Although fewer witnesses may have impacted my earnings, I should also mention that my transmit scale dropped from 1 to 0.71 as a result of new hotspots moving into the neighborhood. A lower transmit scale will impact my earnings regardless of which antenna I use, so that needs to be recognized. Finally, I checked to see if there's any correlation between the number of witnesses and earnings. You'll recall that when checking the correlation for my original antenna, the baseline condition suggested no direct correlation. This observation held true for the new antenna. Having said all this, I'll now take a deeper dive into these numbers and the possible reasons why I realized poorer performance from this commercial grade antenna purchased from a reputable dealer. This screenshot from the Helium Explorer website shows the coverage and earnings realized from my original 3.14 dBi homebrew setup, demonstrating that its performance is reasonable. The Helium Explorer app also demonstrates a strong showing on the number of witnesses pinging a neighboring hotspot as far as 43 kilometers away. Not bad for such a modest antenna. Here, you can see that most of my witnesses are located in the valley where transmit scales are relatively low. With a professional higher dBi antenna, my hope was that my coverage would be extended to areas which host hotspots that have a relatively higher transmit scale, as shown in green on the map. The Helium Board app gives me a nice summary of associated witness transmit scales for my original setup, here showing that 43% have relatively poor transmit scales, 38% are mediocre, and 19% are excellent. I should mention here that due to new hotspots coming online at the start of this experiment, my transmit scale has dropped such that it really wouldn't be fair to use helium token earnings as a measure of performance. Instead, a far better metric would be to look at the number and distribution of witnesses resulting from the upgrade. This screenshot taken prior to my antenna replacement confirms my baseline condition, specifically that my local number of witnesses was well over 60 for my hotspot. And here's the performance resulting from the change after 28 days, essentially a 26% drop in the number of witnesses resulting from replacing my lower dBi homebrew antenna with a commercial grade higher dBi antenna. Well, what about the transmit scale quality of my witnesses? Here's the baseline data yielded by my original antenna, and this shows how things changed when I replaced my antenna with a commercial grade, higher dBi alternative. You can see here that the quality of my witnesses has decreased, but in fairness, this may be a function of greater recruitment of new hotspots in areas I've been witnessing in the past. A higher density of hotspots degrades the quality of my witnesses independent of which antenna I'm using. A more objective way to visualize change in performance is to compare the daily number of witnesses over time. This graph shows that for the month of March, my daily median number of witnesses came in at 42. That median dropped to 16.5 after the antenna replacement, a 60% drop when taking a full month's data into consideration. And here you can see the two graphs superimposed on one another demonstrating again the drop in performance of my hotspot after the replacement, at least in regards to the number of witnesses. That's a significant change and not likely due to hotspots going offline during the period of my experiment. 
But how can this happen with this expensive purchase? Does this suggest something is wrong with this commercial antenna? Not likely. Instead, I suspect this might have something to do with my location in the foothills of the Tucson Mountains, where a lower gain antenna may be better tuned to the distribution of witnesses in the valley. To help explain this, let's go over that thought experiment we developed in my last video. Again, let's assume this is the radiation pattern associated with the low dBi antenna. You can see here that the pattern captures a bunch of witnesses in the valley, but misses a few in the foothills of the Catalinas to the east. Since helium relies on witnesses to earn rewards, my initial instinct might be to increase the gain of my antenna in order to capture more witnesses located farther away. By increasing my gain, I may in fact capture a few witnesses located farther away in the Catalina foothills. However, given the local topography, this improvement in range comes at the expense of lowering my total number of witnesses. This, of course, is an exaggerated view of what might actually be happening on the ground. In fact, when upgrading from this to this, I lost both range and number of witnesses. The bottom line is that for my own location, a lower gain antenna actually performs better in capturing witnesses for my topography, regardless of the higher gain antenna being commercial grade and significantly more expensive, which on the surface would imply better performance. In my case, it also appears that witness transmit scales are improved with the lower dBi antenna, assuming all other factors are held equal. Uh, I can't really put a lot of confidence in this though without knowing how the transmit scales of those witnesses has been changing as a result in the explosion of helium hotspots in the Tucson Valley. Finally, is there any correlation between my earnings shown in this graph and my witnesses? Well, if I superimpose these as I did when evaluating my original antenna, there again appears to be no correlation when using the commercial rack antenna. So that pretty much gives you a little bit more insight into the numbers that I shared at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, with all this in mind, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and bring down that rack antenna and just replace it with that old quarter wave ground plane antenna that's been up there for the last year. Uh, it seems to do better, at least for my conditions. And uh, let's see how things perform over the next 30 days. I'd be interested to see if my, uh, if my performance recovers, at least with respect to the total number of witnesses. So the major takeaway, at least for me personally, as it relates to antennas, is that spending more money and or increasing your antenna DBI doesn't necessarily translate into better coverage and greater earnings. With what you now know after this modest experiment, consider your topography and local distribution of witnesses before making expensive changes to a system that might be working just fine the way it is. But if you do want to play with your setup, I'd recommend line of sight as being the number one thing you can probably do to improve your coverage. I'll post a link to my hotspot in the description of this video, and we'll also share details of when the antenna has been swapped back in the event you'd like to track whether things improve. If you enjoyed this content, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. Thanks.